three, two, one. Here we go! Welcome to the North Carolina Youth and Government YAGCast. We've got a special edition of our media podcast with another alumni spotlight interview. We're doing something new for our youth and government program. We're interviewing alumni to get a sense of what they did in the program, what they're up to today, and lessons they've learned along the way. My name is Megan Hoyt, but everyone in this program calls me Boz, and today I'm thrilled to be co-interviewing alongside Nyla Moore, the current senior district attorney for our mock trial program. We are joined today by Elijah Bowers. Today, Elijah works as a legislative aide to North Carolina State Representative Amber Baker and serves as the first vice chair for the North for the Forsyth County Democratic Party. Elijah graduated with a degree in government from Oral Roberts University. He worked on, he's worked on presidential campaigns and with the Congressional Black Caucus Foundation. Throughout his journey, Elijah drew on skills that he first practiced as a youth and government delegate. His time with the Winston Lake delegation ignited his passion for democracy. As a delegate, he had the opportunity to represent North Carolina at the Conference on National Affairs and as a white advocate in Washington, D.C. Elijah, welcome. Hello. Hey, uh, happy to be here. Yeah, we're super happy to have you and just really excited that you're able to, to join us to tell us about your time in the program and just how connected it is to today, because that's what I sort of love about your story. Um, so before we get going, though, I... I just I think it's really fun for alums to share about their time in the program because we know it's changed um, year over year for sure. Um, and so I would love it if you would just start by telling us a little bit about um, your time in the program. What was significant for you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I first heard about YAG at the end of uh, actually the end of eighth grade um, from a friend. Um, but it was 2012, and the, the presidential campaign was really getting going. Um, and so there's this guy named Barack Obama that's running for president at the time. Um, and so that was very, um, it was very inspiring for me to see someone like him, who's not only just a charismatic leader who's um, bringing people together and was an excellent speaker and very qualified for the position, but also seeing a, a man of color. Um, succeeding um, in a, you know, in an institution, you know, such as politics. Um, and so um, that he kind of inspired me to kind of, you know, get involved, uh, you know, uh, in youth and government. Um, and so I tried to see if there was going to use a government club at my high school. Um, there wasn't. Uh, so I uh, joined through my local YMCA. Um, and I started out as a uh, house delegate uh, my first uh, my first time, um, just kind of taking in the whole process. And from there, um, the guy named Dylan Talley was like, hey, you should apply to, you know, for Kona. And I applied for Kona and really enjoyed it. And uh, from there, I joined GovCap and it, it, it's it's been a really you know, it was, it was a really, really good experience and really um, helped um, cement my interest in government and politics and really wanted to do what I can to help other people. I love that. I love that you uh, got involved and you made a way where there was, like, wasn't a way. I mean, there, if you didn't have a delegation at your high school, I think a lot of students would sort of struggle um, to get involved. Um, so how did, tell us about what that was like to, like I'm assuming it was a smaller delegation, the Winston Lake delegation. Um, how did y'all kind of get that going? Like, how did you get people to say, yeah, I'll go spend a week talking about the government yeah, for a so, week talking about the government? Yeah, so, <laughs> um, so I think, right, it was a delegation of three people <laughs> um, so it was kind of a, it was an offshoot of this program. Um, I was called Why Achievers. Um, so it was for students of color who are first generation college students, you know, on that trajectory. 
Um, and so they had us doing a whole bunch of different, different programs, you know, whether it's, you know, oh, you go to the, go shadow this, this business person for a day or, you know, or go, you know, let's go to this, 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 this college and greens, you know, UNCG or A&T or something like that. Um, so really it, it was kind of just an offshoot of, of that. Um, and so, um, it, it was really interesting, uh, just kind of having to, you know, come there with three delegates and I, I kind of got close to a lot of the folks in the early college delegation because, you know, they were bigger and they, a lot of them had been there before. And so uh, they kind of, you know, adopted, you know, adopted me. And so that, that was really good, really fun. Mm -hmm. Talk to them. So, yep. I guess uh, coming from like such a small delegation, um, is there like any like special memory that you have from that delegation that you still think about today? Yeah, I mean, really, I think the most, the thing that sticks with me the most about that delegation is really um, having, is, is the time spent, really. Because um, if, it, if it's just three of you, um you know you get you get to you get to be able to spend a lot y'all spend a lot of time together um getting to know each other and um and i think that's really what i what i valued kind of the most um which i think which um which one one delegate went to hampton and she's a pharmacy student now um and i think the other and the other one she went to um she went to UNCG and so she I think she's doing business right now so yeah it, it, yeah that that's really what I what I appreciate the most about um j just being able to you know just do it and kind of just interact with the other schools really I mean that, that's really that's really what I appreciate the most yeah is there like any funny stories from that from your time in that delegation that you could speak about yeah um <laughs> uh, there was yeah so actually when i think of yag the funniest story that, <laughs> that i was thinking about actually comes from my time being a Y advocate so you know as a Y advocate they, like that was my first time going to washington dc okay so i'm like okay so and it's yeah so, tell us a little bit about what that is like because yeah comes so, from all over the country right yes Y advocates definitely a program that i think everyone should do if they have the opportunity and so really um so ymca of the usa has a uh, has a lobbying arm that's headquartered in washington dc and so they have what the they have these things that are called lobbying days where they set up meetings with different congressional offices and um and at those meetings they they kind of advocate for different uh bills and policies that they want to see passed in the next congress and so uh why advocates uh were able to come along and kind of tag along for those meetings and kind of and, and you know see what's going on so i mean see what it's really, really like right that's super yes. that's a really amazing experience i mean we yeah. talk a lot about like getting involved in the government and that's like a direct way to do that that's also very hands-on yeah, absolutely. And so uh, we're going to, so we went to like five or six congressional offices. And like the first thing I asked for is, is like, I'm like, I'm asking for like three or four business cards because I had always been like, I, like I had always been told like, yeah, hey, if you go to Washington DC, you need to go get your business cards. And so I get all my business cards, whatever, like I have, like I have them in like a, like a Ziploc bag or whatever. And so I take them with me to college. I'm like, okay, I'm going to, you know, reach out to these people and whatnot and, and, you know, see what's going on. And so, um, but actually, you know, one day my, like early in the semester, uh, freshman year, my roommate, <laughs> he was clean, he cleaned up the room and he actually threw away like all the business cards. So I lost all of them. And oh, so, wow. yeah, so <laughs> it, was a, it was a, it was a good 13 14 business cars i was like oh man but i mean but it was fine i ended up in washington dc again anyway so i mean it was, <laughs> but i was like oh, it didn't hinder man. you it sounds like yeah, <laughs> just a little bit <laughs> oh no that is 
wow, could have been plain and foiled, but it did not, it did not go that way for you. Oh, that's yeah. And, and maybe the lesson there is like, I don't know, add them into <laughs> email or something. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, Elijah, I, I, I heard you say too, that you were um, on the governor's cabinet. And I know that that's a position that a lot of students um, are, are interested in. And so I'm curious if you could tell us a little bit about what that is like. I know it's super intimidating for bill authors to be in like to if they have to go present in front of the governor. Um, mm -hmm. So what is, what is, what, what is that experience both like as the governor's cabinet member, um, but also do you have any thoughts to share with, with bill authors who are coming to the GovCab? Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll start with the second one. I mean, really, if you're a bill author coming to, I mean, you're presenting for, uh, you know, before Gov, GovCab, I mean, really I, the important thing to keep in mind is that, you know, we're like, they're like they're high school kids just like you right and so i think i think many times when people feel when uh as bill authors are presenting their proposals i mean there's a lot of, there's a lot of pressure to kind of present this very eloquent uh you know eloquent long you know speech when really i mean like nine times out of ten i mean the most persuasive thing that you can do is is just talking is talking to the gov cabinet like you're talking to one of your friends right um just just, just a little like a little bit more formal but just just talk just talk to them like they're like they're real people right and so um i think that that that's the one thing that you know uh that the author should keep in mind um because you know yeah because like when I was on Gov Cabinet, I mean that that's sort of things that were most like I wasn't really paying attention to how many big words people were using in their speeches or you know, or like oh like oh yeah, we got you know, we have thirty, forty, fifty, you know, statistics or anything like that. Like which is it's helpful as well, but like it's also just, you know, but like if it's if it's more conversational, um, it, it that's something that it's it was easier to follow, always easier for me to follow um and also being on governor cap gov, gov, gov cab was um pretty enjoyable for me um just being able to just kind of you know look at the bills and um you just you know get to talk about which like which ones we liked or didn't like and um and an analyzing that right now and it's really kind of it's really similar to what i've you know done it was doing in my during my internships and almost kind of what I've uh, been able to do now or pretty recently. Um, so, I mean, it, it's really definitely good practice for, um, for government work at least. Um, yeah. I think it's one yeah. of the, the yeah. most powerful most ways powerful to ways. see the entire bill portfolio uh, because the governor's cabinet members do read, I mean, often it's a, a, a chunk, a certain section, a certain amount of bills. Um, but I, I, I think your point is so strong that it is a really nice way to kind of get a broad overview of what students really care about um, because they're choosing to write bills on all different kinds of topics, right? They get sorted into different committees. Um, and as you said, right, I do want to kind of pivot us into what you are doing today because I know that is super relevant to not only just youth in government, but just being interested in the government and, and that kind of work. So go ahead and tell us, yeah, what is a led, what is a legislative aid? What is, what is that? Yeah, and, and, so. and also like, what's the most interesting part about your work? Yeah, so we okay, so man, where do I start? Uh, no, you know, and you work for a state rep too, so yes. like break that down for us as well. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I also want to keep in mind too the difference between working for a member of Congress versus working for a member of the state house. So when you're working at so when you're working in Washington D.C. for a member of Congress, like those like those. Uh, staffs tend to be at least six or seven people in Washington, D.C., and then six or seven people in the district office. So about 12 to 14 people total. In the state house, it's just your member and you. <laughs> so, um, 
And so really we, we have our hands in a little bit of everything. Uh, we have our hands um, in administrative tasks, you know, such as scheduling, making sure that they're able to get from point A to point B, uh, making sure my meetings aren't double booked uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, we touch on uh, communication strategy. Um, so, you know, depending on uh, the relationship with your member, you can, your member will allow you to do their, uh, run their Twitters or their other social media, um, as well as um, writing uh, either biweekly or weekly newsletters that will inform constituents of what's going on in Raleigh, as well as of what's going on in the district. Um, and then all and in the third bucket that we that we have our uh, our hands in are going to be our uh, really policy. Um, so which also is dependent on your member, right? So if your member is going to is very, very um, active on uh, policy, then, you know, you're then they're going to you have a more of an opportunity to kind of um, interact on that sort of thing as far as like bill drafting, um, meeting with inter uh, special in uh, interest groups to help help you research bills and write bills, meeting with constituents who have good bill ideas, um, and then that sort of thing. And then the fourth bucket is all is just helping constituents with, you know, uh, government issues, right? Like, hey, like, I need help getting my Social Security paycheck, or, hey, I need help with unemployment, you know, like, th th just general things like that. So oh my gosh. those are the oh my uh, four buckets. It sounds like you do so like much, do so much. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like very like very close, like, close to, to like to government like... work too, like in YAG. So I was wondering if you think government impact your life choices like beyond the program. And are there skills you learn from using government that helped that help you that today in your profession? profession? Yes. Um so you're saying, are you, uh, I just want to make sure I understand the question correctly. Were there any, you're saying, are there any lessons from youth and government that I learned that I use now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the main thing that I learned from youth and government specifically um, is, was really just learning how to like really listen and really put yourself in other people's shoes. I mean, which I know that sounds like really, really like simple. But like that's, I mean, but you know, right now, I mean, I mean, working in the state house, I mean, that's really a skill that's really <laughs> that can be lacking um, when you work in politics because too, so many people go into politics because they love their their lane, they love they're really passionate about the issues that they're passionate about, which is great. But when you're working with 169 other people, right, in the North Carolina House, I mean, you have to you have to find ways to find common ground and really get out of your comfort zone and talk to people from different parts of the state um, who might not see issues the way that you see them. And so, I mean, really just kind of, you know, learning like being able to practice those skills and, and getting as much practice on them uh, on those specific skills as early as possible um, is going to be really um, imperative if you really want to have a successive, uh, successful career. Um, I mean, in government, um, when you're working, when you're working in, on the legislative side of things, um, and I mean, you, so I mean, which. Yeah, I'm not just talking about part, crossing party lines. I mean, you know, like many times people have can have disagreements with, with folks of their of their own party as well. So, um, like really just practicing that that ability to just really to really listen and really really empathize and put yourself in another person's shoes. Yes, I've definitely like had to use that skill as well through YAG because it, being in like judicial as well, like I've seen like. It's a lot of people you have like to work with, like kind of finding like your different like groups of people, even within that like larger group. You have different people with different opinions, like you have like the different size and court two that you're battling. You're trying to hear like a lot of people's opinions 
and like also add yours in there. So I definitely see where like that skill comes into play and how you did get that from YAG. So. And just like how valuable that skill is, regardless of whether or not you're going to work in the government. I mean, yes. I think about what people's biggest complaints about our, how our government feels. And I think the number one concern people will say is like, oh, it's so partisan, right? Or it's so divided or divisive, right? Yeah. And I think I'm just curious because you are so involved and because you are paying attention, I mean, you volunteer as well, right? At, at the local level. Um, so I'm curious if you have um, just thoughts on if you're an average citizen, like how we can all employ that skill more, <laughs> um, whether it's in our personal lives, <laughs> right? Thanksgiving yeah. coming up, you know, um, or on social media, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Social, social media is, is a good one. Um, <laughs> I, I think many times too, it's, um, I think the best thing to do is, I mean, you know, ironically enough is, you know, getting out into the community, like and getting out of those civic groups, right? Like whether it's like, whether it's the PTA, PTA, your church groups, um, and, uh, like um, Rotary Clubs, um, Qantas, Key Club. I mean, like like any of those civic organizations, um, because I think a lot of times too, I mean, people can, like when we talk about, I think in my experience, most people, if you start out talking about just like regular you know, kind of, um, what's the term? Like bread and butter issues, um, type, you know, uh, just regular things like, okay, like, you know, um, so probably, well, yeah, I'm trying, I'm trying to think of something that's not, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's well, like, yeah, I know what you yeah, mean. but it is, yeah, but those but I regular issues. you said too about just the, uh, finding common ground ground and how could we start from where we might agree versus maybe where we are diverging yeah yeah absolutely yeah i mean yeah i mean i think the i think the biggest thing is yeah it's just kind of yeah it's just getting involved in those real in those those civic those civic groups and really find, and finding different ways to kind of volunteer on things that yeah and just make some movement on issues that are really important to your community um, because Republicans and Democrats, you know, agree that, you know, certain issues are very important, <laughs> um, you know, regard, you know, so just kind of opening those conversations about that as well. And so, I, and, I, and I think also too, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm a little bit more optimistic than, than a lot of people that, um, that kind of work in politics a lot i mean because i think i think average people i or or you know that work that work a day that aren't working in politics on a day on a daily basis you know i i'm i'm really optimistic that like most people are are, are kind of smart enough to see hey we need to kind of move forward and we need to you know or hey we like you know Hey, we actually like this is a concrete like hey like this pothole has been in our city for like how long we need to go like actually fix that you know or hey we need to make sure that you know that people are able to um, be employed and are able to stay employed and in, in, the, in these kinds of things so yeah you're discussing your profession oh sorry Yes, you were discussing your profession before, like it seemed really interesting. And I was just wondering, very multifaceted. I was wondering, like, what advice would you give to students who are curious about your line of work and like college major wise? Like, what advice would you give? Yeah. So um, for me, I mean, like, man, like, honestly, like there are so many different roads into doing what I do uh, and uh, into becoming a legislative aide. Um but I, I would say, I mean, if you go to college, go to college, um, 
I mean, you could really major, like get a major in something that you're really interested in. Because if you're, because if you're really interested in, in, in that particular major, you're a lot more likely to do well and, and get really, really, really good grades. Um, and so I do that. Um, I would say volunteer um, on political campaigns where you can, wherever you go to school at. Um, and could because when you, when you start volunteering those campaigns, you start meeting candidates and eventually these candidates become members that you may or may not want to work for, or they could, you know, give you recommendations or anything like that. Um, and then also just find different ways to, um, see what, see if you can intern either in Raleigh, um, or whatever state capital that you're in, if you're going to school out of state, um, and also see if you can, you know, find a, find a paid internship, um, in Washington, DC. Right. And so I think for, for like, for me, like I, I did the, um, I didn't, the emerging leaders program through the congressional black caucus foundation. Like they're like, they're a really good an excellent organization. That was an excellent internship. Um, lots of good networking opportunities and, and opportunities to kind of really develop my, um, developed right. Uh, you know, my analytical skills and, and that sort of thing. Um, which they have the same thing for, um, the congressional Hispanic caucus, as well as the, um, Asian American Pacific Islander caucus as well. Um, and then uh, there's also, a, a you know, a, a bunch of, uh, programs that, um, I, that, uh, do a semester in DC. So, I mean, like it, there's any number of options that, that you could do that, um, as well. So I, I would say that for anyone that's interested in doing what, what I would do, just, you know, pick a major you're interested in and get high and get good grades, um, volunteer on campaigns. And then number three, you know, find a way to intern either at your state capital, Washington, DC, or both. That's a really, really good advice. Um, and just super tangible as well. And um, I'm thinking too, just about your experience and I'm wondering are there really valuable lessons that have remained with you, whether it was something you picked up in youth and government or in, in, in your experience during those internships? Um, yeah. You know, things that really stick out to you. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that's a really good one. I mean, so I'll, I'll try to, I'll try to keep it brief, but <laughs> I mean, really there, there's two, right. And so, I mean, it, you know, if I was talking to my like freshman Elijah, I'll just tell him two things. Number one, make sure um, that number one, you know, uh, explore, explore. You know, it, it, like it's like you're young, and you know, we have um, like one of my favorite books is by um, Meg J, Doctor Meg J, about called the Defining Decade, and she's writing about this. Um, period of time called emerging adulthood right from i think about our like late teens to like our early 30s and so it's this time period where there's so much growth and change that's happening that previous generations didn't have um and so just really taking advantage of that by just exploring you know what you want to do and what speaks and what speaks to you and what feels authentic for you um, and then number two, um, learning, like doing the best that you can wherever you are, even if you aren't, um, even if you aren't, uh, it, even if it's not your favorite thing, yeah. right? Um, and so, like, because by that, I mean, like, we'll take, you know, like, take grades, I mean, take grades for example right i mean if you want to go to law school um you know like freshman year oh yeah i want to go to law school hey okay yeah all right that that's great but like the two things for that are like you know gpa and and test scores right 
Um, and so if you, I mean, if you're able to pick a major that you like and you're able to get high grades, um, that may or may not, you know, you like by junior year or senior year, you may not want to be in law, you know, may not want to go to law school, but you know, you might want to do you pivot into something else, right? Maybe you want to get a master's of public health or um, an MBA or something like that. And having a like a higher uh, GPA would give you a lot more freedom to do that, right? Um, and so, I, I think it's really just important to make sure that you're that you're doing that you're taking care of the the little things, right? Like, yeah, GPA and um, be, because taking care of that stuff will can pay dividends to you know whatever whatever you do because it's, it's going to give you a lot more freedom to kind of you know pick pick your career path um and that sort of thing and also just making sure you know like another thing that people don't really pay attention to too much when when you're younger is just like financial like financial um like financial information right making sure that you're able to you know, have, you know, that you're building your credit, you know, that you're building the savings that, you know, that you're, you're able to really, that you know how to do a budget, right? Because I have, like, I have friends that are in their, like, like, late 20s, early 30s, that are, like, just starting how to get a handle on that. And they're, and like, they're, you know, stressed a lot because they feel like, oh, yeah, like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm playing catch up all the time. And so, it's, you know, it's, it's just, learning how to do like those those little things um you know those those little things um well yeah they really yeah. set you up for success right the little yeah. things it sounds like is the lesson <laughs> there for yeah. sure whether it's grades or money or um yeah. relationships too yeah. yeah 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 there's another thing too that i want to ask you about this is something that we're asking all of our alums about, um, which is this idea of failure. I think it's a topic that we don't really talk about enough as a society, but especially with students who are sort of, you know, who opt into youth and government, which tend to be some like high achieving perfectionist type of students. <laughs> I hear knowing laughter. <laughs> Myla. Um so I'm curious if if there is like a if you have a failure story like if is there a, a way you would define failure um, or is there an experience that you've had in your life um, you don't have to tell us you know all the gory details but um, just we'd love to hear like how you worked through it um, and and what you ultimately like got out of that experience if anything yeah so yeah absolutely. Um, <laughs> I think in the last segment here, I just talked about the two lessons I learned. Um, so I learned both of those lessons. <laughs> the, I learned both those lessons like the hard way, right? Especially the second one. Um, so when I came to college, um, you know, as a first generation college student, you know, I had no idea what to really expect from that. And so, you know, I was really good. I mean, as far as like exploring what I wanted to do and, talking to different people from different backgrounds and um you know so like i had like made a bunch of friends like pretty very very quickly um and was really having you know yeah and i was really learning a lot about myself but i just didn't pay attention to those little things um and so um that first semester um was uh, was pretty difficult in some ways, you know, financially and and in in, in, in in different ways, you know, because of you know my own uh, my own doing. Um, but really, you know, I think that next semester I kind of you know I went, I asked for some help, I got some professor, I you know went to professors and I was like, hey, like I need some help, you know, and you know th in this general direction. And so they were able to help me out. They were like, okay, you know, we'll, we'll work with you. And, um, so I, you know, got a, there's one professor in particular. Um, yeah. So Dr. Dr. Ellis. And so I was able to meet with him on a like by bi, like bi-weekly basis. And so kind of just go over different, different things related to just, you know, not only, you know, things that are going on like financially or in the, classroom or anything like that but just general life stuff as well um and so um so i was able to kind of 
you know, turn it around, you know, not be, not learn not to beat myself up too hard. Um, and so, I mean, and, and that's what I would say to anyone too, because I mean, I think like failure, like there's, there's going to be a time in your life, you know, more often than not, um, where you're not going to perform up to you, what you feel your expectations should be. But I, but the key is not, the key is how you get up. Right, and how you're resilient, right? And so, you know, and being a, being able to be resilient, being able to turn it around, being able to lean on people, being able to find those people that you can lean on who can really help you, and just you know, and just climb out one like one step at a time, just one step at a time, and um, and you, and you know, you might end up being in a better position than you thought you could that that you could be in initially. So, I mean, I, I really like that. Yeah. I really like what you said about like climbing out, like how you get out in situations that matters. Like when it comes to failure, because I feel like it's like a pressure. You feel like you have like perfect perfection, but like when you reach a certain yep. point of like failure, you know, like, oh, I messed up and we like wallow in this failure, but you can't really do that. Like what you said about yep. just how you get out of the failure, really, that yep. really resonates with me because like I really like, that's really useful in life and stuff like keeping that in the back of your hands like not how you start kind of but how you finish exactly i mean exactly exactly and so yeah i mean exactly yeah so. and having good people around you it sounded like you knew yeah. how to go to mentors and actually ask for help um which is yeah. something that can be super scary and feel really daunting but i think <laughs> what's the number one thing people say they want to do with their jobs is like i want to help people <laughs> regardless of the profession you know and so um i think we all we all are yeah willing to help um, that's really special thanks so much for sharing that um lesson elijah i appreciate that a lot um and now we're going to move into our um, a sort of a more a fun, uh, hopefully, <laughs> section. Uh, this is our last round. Uh, we call this like our, our roundup questions. These are, These questions, are questions that we are, are asking, asking every single alum who is on our YAG cast. And they have actually been created by our officer team. And so I'm going to let Nyla actually ask the questions. Um, but just so you know, that's the that's our, our kind of lightning round here for you. So the first question is this or that question, and it's Friday Fun Night or Governor's Gala? Friday Fun Night. <laughs> That's really Friday Fun Night. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um, the next one is, what is your favorite or most impactful book that you've read? I think like you touched on this a little bit, but just yeah. want to like remind us. Yeah. Yeah. The Defining Decade by Meg J. Easy mm -hmm. read. I th think I think everybody should read it. Yes. <laughs> After looking at that book, it sounds really good. Um, what profession other than your own would you, you like, to attend? like to attend? Oh man. So man, so me and my actually me and my girlfriend have actually talked about this. So <laughs> if I wasn't doing what I was doing now, either sports agent <laughs> or um e either sports agent. Yeah, I think that's what. Be. I mean, if I if I had if I had if I had like athletic ability, I would like to be a professional athlete. I would in another life, but <laughs> I mean, <laughs> but yeah, no, I. But yeah, that's all I would do. Both really interesting careers and very opposite from your own. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> Elijah, oh my goodness. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and join us on the YAGCast. I yeah. have so enjoyed um, spending time with you over the years, whether it's at UK yeah. Government or at Kona. And I'm so grateful that we've had an opportunity to continue doing that today. Um, I cannot wait for students to just hear some of these stories and hear some of these lessons um, because you really offered us uh, some good wisdom tonight. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. So yeah, a lot of things that resonated with me greatly. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Boz. Thanks, Nyla. Of course. Right.